Welcome everyone to this episode of the Palmetto Guardian. I'm Sergeant Chelsea Baker and today we have some special guests in the studio with us and the topic of discussion is going to be Women's History Month. So um, we have Sergeant First Class Penn and Lieutenant Yancey as well as retired Brigadier General Goff. So welcome and thank you all for being here today. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so let's start with Sergeant uh, Penn. Can you explain your job title and what section you're with and all that? Uh, yes. Yeah, so my name is uh, Sergeant First Class Felicia Penn. i um, been in the Guard now for uh, 22 years. Um, just super excited to be here today um, to share some thoughts about <coughs> Women's History Month um, and the contributions. Um, so I currently work in the uh, South Carolina Army National Guard MOBE office as the MOBE NCO. Um, and I um, am also Equal Opportunity Advisor, and I serve as the Federal Women's Program um, Manager. Okay. And um, Lieutenant Yancey, could you uh, tell everybody that who, where, where you come from? <laughs> yes, I'm Lieutenant Yancey. I'm currently on the full-time side with the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. And on the M-Day side, I am with the 1050th Transportation Battalion. Okay. And we also, like I said earlier, we have retired Brigadier General Goff. And ma'am, it's a pleasure to meet you. Thank um, you. I enlisted, I think, in 2011, so I kind of didn't, still didn't know leadership and all that. But I have heard stories, and I've seen your displays and stuff in the museum. So it's amazing that you're here today with us to talk. Um, but I kind of want to go into your career. You enlisted in um, 1977, and then That's you right. commissioned in 81, mm -hmm. right? That's um, correct. So can you kind of go from enlisting until up until you became Brigadier General? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's a long, a long line of history. <laughs> no, uh, that's okay. Um, yes, I enlisted in 1977, like you said, and, and I just went in the armory in my hometown, uh, Greenwood. I grew up in 96, but uh, Greenwood was where the armory was, and I rode past there every day, uh, going to college and everything. So um, back then, there were not very many jobs in, in that area. And so I did a lot of different jobs before becoming full-time for the National Guard. But I walked in the armory and signed up. And they said, do you want to know what you're signing up for? I said, no, <laughs> just, just sign me up. <laughs> And so I did that and, and went on to, um, first thing they said since I'd graduated from college is to um, go to officer school. So I did that, and that's where I met my husband, Eddie Goff. He was, he's in the military for 33 years. And um, so went to officer school, and from there uh, started assignments, and which led to eventually becoming the chief of the joint staff. Uh, where I retired mm -hmm. in 2015. So how did it feel to become the first Brigadier General uh, female in South Carolina? Like, how was that? Well, it was pretty surreal, to tell you the truth, because I didn't start out with the intent to uh, look at it that way. Um, what I think happened is that, um, which is a good thing for for everybody, is that I did one step at a time, mm -hmm. and uh, each one of those steps led to the other. And, you know, you have a lot of distractors, which we'll get into, I'm sure, but um, just to um, sink your teeth into what you're doing at the moment. And then, um, but but the uh, another important point is not to just keep looking down. You've got to look up and out, mm -hmm. and that's the way you move forward. And you got to make a lot of moves, too. You can't just stay in your comfort zone, and that's that's the tough part. Mm -hmm. Let's. I, I want to go back to uh, General Goff in a little bit, but I want to kind of talk about why we recognize Women's History Month. Yeah, so it's, it's really important that we recognize Women's History Month um, so that we recognize and celebrate the achievements of women Throughout just American history, it's an opportunity just to celebrate um, their sacrifices, their service that they've made to the military, to our country. It's, it's just phenomenal just mm -hmm. to be able to recognize that. So back to General Goff, uh, with your service, did you ever encounter any uh, issues with um, women serving in the military? Because, I mean, back then it wasn't as common as it is today. 
Um, no, you, um, you're absolutely right. Um, I think, you know, if you look at um, Sergeant Major Gail Williams, who's on display where I am in the museum, mm-hmm. we joined this, um, well, I joined the year before, but on a delayed entry, so I actually came in the same year that she did, 1978. And um, she ended up in the Women's Army Corps. So the Women's Army Corps was just transitioning women to the Army during that time period, and I ended up, of course, in the national in the Army National Guard. And uh, so there were two females in the unit when I walked in there to the Armory for my first drill, and uh, you asked the question about the first females I saw in uniform, and that was the first females I saw in uniform. And they were awesome people. I you know, really enjoyed working with them and and uh, was inspired by them. Um, so when I got promoted, the question you asked, um, it was kind of a surreal moment going from 1977 to that point. But then, of course, by that time, we had had a lot of first, not mm-hmm. just me. So that's important to recognize that, too. Yes, ma'am. I was going to say, like, you were kind of at a turning point with the transition and you like if you if it would have been a little bit earlier you could have been a part of that in transition but kind of in a sense you were still part of the first females being put in to the army and the national guard as well as eventually down the line in your career you became the first brigadier general so I mean you've kind of played a lot in that history of first for women in the military Mm -hmm. yes so um, going back to women's history, Sergeant Penn, I know that there were some topics or things that you wanted to talk about with the history of Yeah, of it. so when we take a look back at the history of women serving in the military, um, you know, women mostly uh, served as nurses within the Marines, mm-hmm. um, the Army, the Navy, uh, during World War One. but it wasn't until Eleanor Roosevelt began advocating uh, for women just to... Um, you know, have a greater role uh, within the military. She recognized that that was really, really important. And so in 1942, that's when the uh, Women's Auxiliary Army Corps um, was formed, which later became known, of course, as the Women's Army Corps, and um, which later became the Women's Army Corps. Um, But, you know, it was attached to, but it was not integrated into the Army until 1948 when it was passed um, you know, by Congress and women actually begin to be recognized as actually having a role within the army. Yeah. Could you imagine it? Like if that would have never happened, like where we would be today, like what would, what would our impact be for the military? Would it still be just a women's corps and we have specific jobs or like, it's just crazy to think that if that would have never started then, where would we be today? Exactly. Um, And I think about all the amazing uh, firsts. Of Mm -hmm. course, you know, we have here with us, of course, Brigadier General Golf being the first female serving in the South Carolina Army National Guard. But I also look back at uh, Sarah Emma Edmonds, who fought during the Civil War, and she had to disguise herself, you know, as a male just to to be in that role. And years later, you know, to be recognized for just just so many uh, women that have served and made so many different sacrifices. And I can't imagine even the uh, women that I look up today that are, you know, that are serving and that have retired. <clears throat> Just such a great contribution and influence to those of us that are serving right now. Mm-hmm. So I'm very proud of the strides we've made thus far. When I was coming into the military, it was around the time that females were formally being uh, implemented into combat <clears throat> arms. Mm-hmm. So certainly I'm proud of those accomplishments. And I feel like we still have a long way to go. So I'm looking forward to seeing what continues to happen in the future. Yeah, and I'm glad you brought that up because uh, Sergeant Penn and I were talking beforehand. And she was saying that uh, General Goff has lots of questions from people. um, And one of them particularly was if she thought that women should serve in a combat role. So could you kind of elaborate on that? When people come and ask you that, like, what are your thoughts? Well, I'm kind of... um Puzzled Mm -hmm. by it, Um, because if you look at uh, 1776, you had Margaret Corbin, who stood up for her husband and um, manned the cannon, (laughs) (laughs) and uh, she was the first person to receive, the first female to receive a pension from the military, from the Army. And so then you fast forward uh, almost 250 years to Tracy Dorgan, 
who was our first in field artillery, mm -hmm. and that that occurred before my retirement. So mm -hmm. I was glad to see that come, you know, come about during my time period there. And so I think there's a um, there's a lot to, uh, that people don't know uh, about women mm -hmm. in the military and their roles that they play that they played. Um, in fact, when later on, when I was on a board looking at the heroes we have right here in South Carolina, I came across Lieutenant Colonel Charity Early, who was the uh, first black female battalion commander during World War II and was in charge of a battalion of people who um, was a postal service and, and handled the mail for thousands of GIs in Europe. Mm -hmm. And then um, also um, Juanita Redmond Hips, who was in World War II and um, the Air Force nurse um, uh, flight nurse program is patterned after her. Uh, she's the inspiration for it. And a book came out and a movie published about her. Oh, wow. And, um, and it was a best-selling book uh, because she escaped from uh, Corregidor and, um, and, and survived it. And so, um, you know, I had no idea about all of that and I think that uh, there's a lot we could do to get the word out about things like that about uh, women's role in the military mm -hmm. now with that um and like we were talking about earlier there's a lot of diversity and stigmas and barriers for women to make getting up into these positions and proving to everybody that they can do the job just as well as anyone else. So if you guys would like to kind of talk more about um, the diversity and breaking those barriers within the military. Um, yeah, so in 19, uh, I think it was between 1975 and, and 1979, we uh, really began to see a lot of the rules and the regulations beginning to equalize between when and men and women who were serving in the military. Um, you know, there was a time when women who were serving, when you were pregnant, then you had to, you know, you had to be, they would separate you from the mm -hmm. military. And it wasn't until uh, 1975 that, you know, uh, the Secretary of Defense said, hey, wait a minute, let's, you know, not make them involuntarily discharge, you know, just because a woman decides that she wants to, you know, become a parent, to mm -hmm. be a mother. So I, I think that's a major barrier itself. Um, and even with the uh, enlisted uh, age with women being able to enlist, there was a discrepancy with that, you know, between men and women. So just so many different um, barriers that were broken. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, Lieutenant Yancey, uh, you're with um, the diversity and equality group and all of that. What is your take on it? So eliminating some of those barriers to equal employment opportunity is a major part of what I do on the technician side and what First Sergeant Kathy Donald does on the military side for the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Our mission is to ensure combat readiness of all National Guard personnel, military, and civilian by fostering an environment of respect, growth, and human dignity. So I want to go back to um, you, ma'am. Um, you were in during a, a time period where there was a lot of change. Um, what changes did you see, get to see over this period of time, and how did it make you feel to be able to be a part of that? Um, well, I think one significant change is that um, women went to combat. I mean, that's incredible. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, and, and again, that's another place where we could recognize um, the women who did that. Uh, even more. And so um, I was proud of that during Desert Storm um, and and again during Iraq and Afghanistan to see women do that. So I think that's one of the most significant changes. But then there again, you still have people ask, should women be in combat? And and <laughs> and of course, you know, they, they already are. They have been. Mm -hmm. and, and they're going to continue to be. Mm -hmm. um, so... Now, with that, how would, and this is for all of you, how, how would you encourage female service members to pursue their career within the military? Like, what advice would you give them? Um, well, uh, the advice that I would give them, I think, is just um, to ask themselves, is this something that I really want? And if it's something that you really want, 
go for it. Um, of course, there are going to be some challenges. There are going to be um, some times when you feel like, you know, hey, I, I want to give up. But um, remember why you're doing it. Um, remember that, you know, there are other p- soldiers, women out there that are watching you mm-hmm. and that you're motivating you know, someone else um, that others see and they recognize those challenges that you face, even though you think that they don't. Um, But just to continue um, in the fight, continue in the battle, just to persevere and just to really want it. And I think when when you really want something, you work hard at it and ultimately you will achieve it. Mm -hmm. I also feel like finding a female mentor is important. And Sergeant Penn actually works with an excellent organization Women's Influential Network that provides minority female mentors to anyone in the South Carolina National Guard. And I think through programs such as that, um, finding your own mentor, whoever it may be, helps as a female service member or technician to kind of find your way. Uh, And I think that's valuable for the South Carolina National Guard. Mm -hmm. One is that you have to be ready. Mm-hmm. Um, you have to be ready um, physically, um, schools. I was always a um, couple steps ahead on those things. And, of course, I worked out since I was 15 so in a gym, so that, didn't, that part didn't hinder me a bit. But you have to be ready with all of those things. Um, you're, um, and then um, also you have to have a plan. Um, you think you know, a couple of steps ahead of where you are. Uh, not just one step, but I'd say at least two steps ahead of where you are so that you can find your path. And uh, you have to be willing to move. It's not comfortable, but early in my career, I uh, volunteered for tours around. I went to Panama, Okinawa, J- uh, Japan, uh, Belgium, uh, later on, it was more movement of positions mm-hmm. um, and branches, even you know, and and that's one of the things that um, is a distractor and is um, one of the things that makes it difficult because you have to learn new things, you have to get out of your comfort zone. Um, but I was the first uh, female at the uh, combined support maintenance shop as a superintendent. Uh, but when I was asked about going out there, uh, of course, I didn't want to leave human resources because I <laughs> love that area. Mm-hmm. And um, But I did, you know, and it, I got out of my comfort zone. And then most of that time was spent at the National Training Center, those two years. Um, but then um, from there, I went to National Guard Bureau and, um, again, you know, out of in charge of maintenance team chief for the nation. And then uh, back to Fort Jackson, they said there's a quirky job out there. It's the um, deputy chief of staff for Army National Guard. And I said, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so when I got there, um, they actually need a secretary to the general staff. But who's going to argue um, with that type of position mm-hmm. to get that experience? So it's a must to get out of your comfort zone. And then get rid of as many distractors as you can. Okay. Is there anything else that any of y'all would like to add um, (coughs) about Women's History Month? Or was there something that maybe I didn't ask that you would like to talk about? I just wanted to mention the two female military officers that have been nominated to lead a four-star command. Mm -hmm. um, And how that's um, a really big deal. You know, recently two female military officers um, were nominated to lead a four-star command. Um, This was recognized by the White House um, for International Women's Day. I thought that was really awesome. Air Force uh, General Jacqueline Van Ovos and Army Lieutenant General Laura Richardson. Um, They will actually be the second and the third um, to lead a combated um, command for women, and I think that's really, really awesome. Yeah, that is definitely incredible. Mm Mm-hmm. And it just shows, like, how much uh, history has been made. And it's still continuing to be made e- every day. Like, there's always going to be a first for something. But it's it's nice to be able to sit down and recognize those um, because sometimes they get bypassed or people, like, everyday life happens. And so um, it's good to actually sit down and talk about it and learn about it and hear about it and go down to the museum and see the displays and stuff that they have on these topics and these people that, had such a huge impact during this time 
Um, but I really appreciate all of y'all coming out. Is there anything else, yeah. ma'am? Um, just wanted to say, um, follow that up <coughs> with, a lot of times I get the question of, uh, do I have any regrets? Mm -hmm. And um, I used to have a regret after, all the time. After As soon as I left something, I say, well, why didn't I do this or that? Mm -hmm. um, but uh, reflecting on it now with some distance in between retirement and now, I see that the only regret is not spending more time with my family. So I just want to um, uh, speak up for the families and, um, and uh, say to the service members to take time for your families. Uh, in everything else that you have going on, definitely keep that first. Yeah, for sure. Because, I mean, we get caught up in our daily jobs. And if you're full-time staff or even if you're just a traditional M-Day soldier, I mean, you're a citizen soldier. You are you have your one weekend a month, your two weeks of AT, and then you are have a normal life on top of that. So I'm really glad, ma'am, that you brought that up because that is an important factor. Because if it, it, you didn't have your family support and if you – if they're not taken care of, then you can't take care of yourself. Yeah. So definitely right. making sure that um, you're taking care of your family and and allowing them to help you through it, but also helping them when they need help. So, but other than that, is there anything else that you guys would like to uh, mention? I think we got it. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, Thank before you. we close out, though, I do, um, <coughs> Sergeant Penn and Lieutenant, if you guys could kind of just give your information if someone wants to reach out to you, how to contact you for your programs. Um, so if you would like to um, reach out um, to me um, for the Federal Women's Program um, and for a Women's Influential Network, please um, feel free to reach out to me via email or you can reach me by phone at 803-299-1410. Uh, Again, I'm Sergeant First Class Penn. And if you wanted to know anything else about the Federal Women's Program or any of our other special emphasis programs that we have in the uh, EEO office, you can reach out to me. Our office is in the Blufford Armory, and I'm on Global as Lieutenant Brianna Yancey. Uh, if you want to reach out to our ODI director, Captain Thompson, or our EO advisor for the state, uh, First Sergeant Kathy Donald, they're on global as well. Okay. And we'll definitely put all that information down in the description on YouTube for those who are watching. Um, but again, ladies, thank you so much for coming in. And I really appreciate y'all taking the time to talk to us about um, Women's History Month. Um, with that, if you like this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button and we will catch you guys in the next episode.